Okay, so we're looking pretty good so far. Um, I'm liking what I see. I'm happy with where we're at. It's fairly straight. We can clean a lot of this up with file work in the end after it cools down. It won't be completely annealed at that point, but if I let it air cool from hot, it's going to be a lot softer than if I quench it. When I quench it, I immediately change the molecular structure of that steel and it becomes hard again. So I want to let it air cool so it'll be softer so I can do the file work. But before I do that, I need to get this handle where I want it because this handle's not exactly right. If you look at our picture, first of all, we're going to have to have a hardwood handle on here, which means we may have to turn a little bit further up on this, let it air cool, not quench it, so that we can beat it over and mushroom it out or put a washer on top of it and mushroom it out unless we want it to put a nut on there, which I really don't want to do. I want to stay more traditional. The other thing is this handle is actually curved down. If you look at one of these tools in the photograph, the handle is actually curved down from the blade a little bit to give you more leverage. So we've got to put that curvature in this handle going this direction, and then we'll be able to start working on the blade. Everything else will be pretty much in a finished state. That's a whole lot different than the picture, to be honest. Now once I've hit this thing hard with a heavy duty horseshoe rasp to remove a lot of metal, now I'm going through here with an actual mill file. This thing's marked axe right on it. This is a file for an axe or a knife. It's a Nicholson file. And it definitely, you can feel it cutting metal as soon as you hit it. I bevel this one side just a shade, just to flatten everything up and make sure that the blade profile is flat. And I'm using this for a final sharpening. Got one spot here that's kind of giving me a fit right there. I should get through that in a minute. Now I won't take this down to a final hone because I still have to heat treat it. It's still soft. So right now I'm just trying to make sure that my blade profile is even, that I've got a good bevel and a good grind on here, and that my blades even all the way across and sometimes that means knocking it down a little bit and taking away some of the work that you just did to make sure that that blade's pretty straight and if you hold your file up to it you can look for daylight in there and you can tell where that blade profile is not straight this looks pretty good Okay, so we heated that blade up till it was bright orange and we quenched it. And that made it very, very hard. And that is a heat treat. Now we have to temper the blade by taking some of that hardness out of it, which means we need to heat it up again and kind of watch the colors rise through the metal. And you can do this in an oven at home. And just set your oven for about 350, 400 degrees and put it in there for an hour. And that will bring some of that temper into the metal tempering it so that it's not brittle and that's exactly what we're trying to accomplish because when you quench something in water when it's red hot you've made it as hard as it can be and you've made it brittle again we don't want this blade to be brittle but we still want it to be hard enough to hold a good edge to do that we have to temper it and that's what we're doing now so when you're done with this you would just hook the tool into a U right here I just pounded a U I made from rebar in here and you could use an eye bolt for this maybe on the workbench that we made, which is what I'll probably do, that I can remove and just put through one of the pass-through holes and tighten with a butterfly nut. But this would give you leverage on the downstroke for 
working material like this. And like any other tool, I'm sure there's a learning curve to this. And I'm not doing it exactly as it was meant to do right off the bat. But you have quite a bit of adjustment in here that you can do with this tool. And it does take a really, really big bite out of the wood. But it can also take finer shavings as well if that's what you desire. Again, I'm sure there's a learning curve to this that I'll figure out as I go. But you can see it does do exactly what it's supposed to do. And you're taking advantage of mechanical leverage from this pivot point. Folks, I appreciate you joining me out here today for this little uh, experiment in making a stock knife. I saw this tool quite a while ago in one of my encyclopedias of early American tools. And I saw it again when I was doing some research about bodgers online because it was one of the tools that bodgers often used for thinning down stock and things like that before it went to either a shave horse or in place of a shave horse or right before it went to the treadle type pole lathe that we talked about in earlier videos. They used this tool in the Americas as well as in Europe and it was used for lots and lots of things not only by bodgers but it was also used for making clogs, making tent stakes and making straight last soles for shoes. So I think it's a worthwhile tool to understand and know and maybe to even practice with a little bit to see what particular tasks you may do that this tool is best suited for. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.